And um, but one thing did inspire me. Uh, I think I move faster when people tell me I can't. I think that motivates me when someone says you can't do something. Then I have to show them that this is, this can be done. And uh, once when I was 12 years old, uh, 14 years old, uh, our caseworker came out to my house and uh, she was sitting across the table from uh, me and uh, uh, she was looking right in my face and she was telling me, you know, you're never going to be anything. And, uh, and I said, they're paying this lady to come here and ridicule me. And like time is not. What reason did she give? She because I was heavy, because she just didn't particularly like the way I looked, and um, uh, my mother was trying to explain to her that I wanted to go to a, a different high school out of the area, and I needed to get. She, my mother needed to get an extension to get more funds, so I had bus fare. And this lady, she looked at me in my eye and told my mother that. I would, each one of her children would work 12 and a half cents a day. And when she told me that, something just clicked. I'm saying, like, no one is going to tell me what I'm worth. And um, I think from then on, this, this little anger in me was just building to prove to this one person that I was better than what she said I was. And, and I had a goal that I had to reach and I was going to do that. Are you aware of her presence anywhere today? No. I'm going to no. send her a card. <laughs> no. I know her name though, but I won't mention her name. <laughs> I want to watch the show and go by and watch your new student. Yeah, she's probably retired. I know she did have a little crush on my brother, so she's not too much. She wasn't too much older. Yeah, I'm serious. She had, a she had a problem. And she was there trying to help us or I don't know what she was there doing. She told you you'd never make it. She told me that I would never make it. I would never be anything. I should learn a trade. And uh, basically domestic. I mean, I could not believe this person. And I said, maybe that's, not, maybe that's the game. They bring people in to beat us up so we won't get out. But that was just my belief as a child because I couldn't understand that this lady is supposed to motivate us. If you look back on the conduct and what has happened to some of your playmates, what do you think went wrong? Is this an example of one of the things that make kids give up? I think so. Because number one, they don't know that there's an out. You know that they're and they're trapped. I, one of the one of the coldest things that happened that had happened in Robert Taylor is the fact that they took the bars that were halfway up and took them all the way up. So to me, that was no different from uh, Sing Sing Prison. What bars? You mean on those back on the, porches? On the those are front porches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, on, on the railings. You know, you look up. We had the freedom to look over and look and feel the air at that time when we first moved in and um, and they had taken the bars and put them all the way up and to me it was like one of, one of my pet peeves um, uh, is the Illinois State Building. It looks like a prison to me and I really don't like going into that building and that's what Robert Taylor uh, looks like to me now, Stateway Gardens and, and the rest of them, you know. Um, it's heartbreaking. I heard you say earlier, I thought I did, that you were aware of some of your contemporaries being killed. Oh yes, yes. I mean students, I mean students that were in, uh, we were all classmates, you know, we were all playing in the, in the, uh, in the playground and uh, some person would come up from another area just right down the street basically and uh, pull out a gun and they could have shot me, they could have shot anybody and these are innocent children I mean you know innocent teenagers, they weren't part of the game they, What attitude did the policemen have to it? They really didn't have an attitude, it was like they might not even come you might lay there and bleed to death you might, I mean you know it was like you know you would see the police pass by and they never stopped they never stopped. They had written most of you off yeah, right. And then even, and a lot of my uh, uh, friends, we used to talk about that Robert Taylor, um, um, when it was really getting rough, and we used to say it was a concentration camp. Because instead of having the number of families that was, it was designed to hold, which was too many, 
it had twice as many. So you know if you put that many people with two elevators, two elevators, 16 floors, 10 apartments per floor, and about 10 people per apartment. Your first break, uh, the first 